wish somebody would play catch with me. I'll play with you, Timmy. Whoa, thanks, Super Friend. It's Super Time. That's right, kids. With Super Friend, you'll never have to play by yourself anymore. And he'll always take you first for the team. Super Friends, if you want to run and play. Super Friends, but your friends have moved away. Super Friends, count on us to save the day. Super Friends is here to stay. This commercial gets more annoying every time I see it. Settle down, children. As part of our school and local business program, the toy manufacturer, Mr. Charles Orlando, would like to make an announcement about uh, uh, Super Pals. <laughs> I think your teacher means Super Friend, right, kids? <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for making me feel so welcome today. But before I go, hold on to your seats and get ready to meet two actual real-life Super Friends right here in your own classroom. Rope. Can she ever watch this? Hello, would you like to play catch with me? Ah! Do you want to catch, catch, catch? It's super time! My hair! <laughs> of course, these are just generic models. When you visit the factory tomorrow, each of you will receive a super friend in his or her image. Don't forget your permission slips. It doesn't look anything like the one on TV. How do you get the baseball back inside? Do you think this button? Why did we need to suit up? Because there's something fishy about Super Friend. Ooh, come on, we'll miss the school bus. The school bus left without us? They'll have to try harder than that to keep us from busting up their shady operation. Do you think they're closed? Go away. But we came for the tour. No more tours. There must be another way in. Hey, there's a door with a keypad. What code would they pick? Evil? No. Sinister? No, not that either. I know, nefarious. Rats. How about password? No way, that's too easy. Obviously, they're very clever. I use the same code on my computer. Hmm. Oops. I'd better readjust your arm coordination circuitry. Hello? No visitors. There's nobody home. We're looking for our class. Oh, right. The tour group. I'm sorry, I was busy teaching my prototype to play checkers. I didn't know Super Friends could play checkers. Oh, they can't. This is my early prototype that was rejected by the company. Needlessly elaborate for our target clientele, they said. What are these? They are the original design models of Super Friends. Notice the craftsmanship and attention to details. Now all the company wants to do is cut corners. Chuck Commando? That one wasn't in the TV commercial. That one's in storage now, children. Mr. Tinker! This area is authorized personnel only. Quick, hide! Mr. Tinker, our guests are in the measuring room, ready to be scanned for their very own super friends. You and your mass-produced toys. You were on the verge of bankruptcy when I took over. With my method, Every kid can afford a super friend. I wanted to build a quality product for lonely children. First, we'll conquer the market. <laughs> and then, we will conquer the world. 
Don't include me in your plans. I'm a toy maker, not a mad scientist. Fine, be that way. I'll be sure not to invite you to the company picnic. Ciao! Hello, children. How nice of you to spy on me. Get them, super friends! I guess they can fly after all. Hey, super time! See that, Mr. Tinker? Your super friends could play catch, but mine can conquer nations! Time to pick up the trash! Officer Halcroft! We need help! Hold on, this is my favorite part. Don't you see? Super Friend is really a turbocharged robot built to take over the world! Oh, and I suppose you got all this from a TV commercial. No, we went to the toy factory because they promised to give each of us a free Super Friend. And... Free Super Friends? That's a pretty good deal. We better investigate this case. And this is where the product will be packaged, destined for a very lucky boy or girl. You know, when I was little, we didn't have super friends. Sometimes your only pal was a sock puppet. That's I why super friends were created, Officer Halcroft. We took a scan of you on your tour of the scanning room. Here, there's someone you should meet. A <laughs> super friend for me? Well, you shouldn't have. Careful. If you press its belly button, it turns into a killer robot with lasers and a rocket pack. <laughs> Don't you love children's imagination? Thank you, Mr. Orlando. And uh, sorry for the disturbance. You can't just leave. Come with us. We'll show you the super friends that attacked us. Don't worry, officer. I'll make sure Mona finds her classmates. Okay. Run! Well, look who decided to show up. Miss Gatto, we've been looking for you everywhere. We were just getting ready to go home. Great. We should get out of here. Super friends are super fiends made to take over the world. Yes, Mona, put that in your report on our visit to the factory. Thank you for everything, Mr. Orlando. Sorry we had a few technical problems today, Miss Gatto. We'll be sure to deliver the super friends to your students very soon. Enjoy your last day in business. Thang, come on. Princess Giant, Zatman, we'll be right back. Mona, I think we got off on the wrong foot. Can we all just be friends? We don't make friends with tyrants. Uh-oh. I am Chuck Commando. Mr. Tinker created me, but now... I'm in charge. And since you refuse to join me... when we were on the tour with Officer Halcroft. We're doomed! They're not finished transforming. We might have a chance yet. We're, uh, super friends. Beep, 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 duper time. Beep, beep. Oh, it's the new models. Say, did you see three kids and a cat in there about yay high, very nosy? One of them's got a real mouth on it. Stop right there! What do we do now? Imposters! and rocket packs to fight back! Whoa! How do you steer this thing? Make it stop! Thanks, Chuck. Leave Fang alone! Look! 
Looks like your meddling little friend took the smart way up. A chance you no longer have. So long, Lily. Nice knowing you. Hey! Why did he stop? I just realized. No matter how big or bad Chuck Commando is, he still runs on batteries. And remember, kids, the new and improved softer friend is non-violent, non-confrontational, and no longer causes rashes. Softer friend, softer friend, I love you, softer friend. I think it loses some of its appeal when it stops flying. At least Mr. Tinker is running things now, and he can make toys the way he always intended. Would you like to play catch with me? Hey, kids, come and meet the best partner I ever had. It's super time. Hey, Mona. How come you're wearing your vampire outfit? Oh, I'm just working on my new moves for the big street dance tomorrow night. It's called the Vampire Vamp. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> there goes another satisfied customer. That's Penelope Wiggins, the new wig designer. Hi, kids. I bet you're here to see my world-famous wig collection. Don't be shy. Come on in. Make yourselves at home. I have something for everyone's head. You are attending the town street dance tomorrow night, aren't you? I... I guess so. Here, take a look at these. I've got some special prices for kids today. That wig takes to you very well. You see, a wig needs to take. The one I'm wearing now took to me instantly. <laughs> Can I interest you in a customized hairpiece? It's fashionable and fun. I have my own style, which works fine, thank you. You're trying to be what? A vampire? <laughs> Vampires are so passe, darling. I'm not trying to be a vampire. I am one. And vampires are never passe. Oh, I see. You haven't lived until you try this one on. It was meant for you. Take root. Careful. Sorry, I think it's okay. My wigs, my babies. I I guess we better get going. But I think I want a wig. No, you don't. But you haven't bought anything. We'll be back later. Much later. What's the big rush, Mona? There's something very creepy about that Penelope Wiggins. Here you go, Mona. One out of sight triple scoop. Thanks, Mr. Hyde. I'm gonna sit over there. Fashion tiara. Penelope Wiggins personally picked this tiara just for me. By the street dance tomorrow, everybody in town must have one of Penelope's wigs on. Even you can look cool with one. Hey, did you see your wig? I'm convinced that those wigs are alive. Living wigs? I've never heard of that. My vampire intuition is almost never wrong. And that Penelope was acting pretty weird. She's just a city woman from the high-class world of fashion. They make it their business to be weird. Hello, Mona. Hey, Mona. How do you like our hairstyles? <laughs> you a wig. Here, try it on. No! Don't resist, Mona. 
We'll turn you into a Wiggy and yet. <laughs> Thing. I won't let the Wiggins touch a hair on you. This is more serious than I thought. Oh, hi, Mrs. Bones. Is Charlie there? Oh, okay, thanks. Hello? Really? Things have gotten even weirder around here. My parents have turned into Wiggins. What are they? They're like some new kind of zombies. I'm sure Penelope has something to do with it. Why else is everyone wearing wigs acting all, uh... Totally wigged out? Exactly! And I just called Charlie, and his mom said he went out. He kept talking about that cool wig. Uh-oh. I'll be over in 20 minutes. I bet I know where we can find him. Now that's definitely weird. Double trouble weird. find out before the street dance tomorrow night. Hey, there's Charlie. Do 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 do. 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 We've got to get it off his head before the Wiggians take root. Good morning, class. Well, well, it sure is a pleasure to see so many wig wearers. Miss Gotto, your Eiffel Tower is very becoming. <laughs> Thank you, Principal Shabley. <laughs> your Elvis is ultra cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm proud to announce we have a special guest speaker this morning. Many of you have already had the pleasure of meeting her. Penelope Wiggins. Good morning, class. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the exciting history of wigs through the ages. From Roman times to the French Renaissance to the 21st century, mankind has enjoyed the fashion fun of wigs. But what nobody knows is that they're really from the planet Wigian in the Taylor Topper Galaxy. Now that their planet has been destroyed, the Wigians need humans to provide their scalp as a new permanent home for these peaceful, stylish creatures. I'll never let them root in my head! <laughs> no one is forcing you to wear one, Mona. If you want to stay in your passé vampire attire, that's your biz. Charlie, you have to take off that wig. It'll turn you into a Wiggian. Penelope's wigs just make people feel good, that's all. She's trying to find homes for refugee Wiggians. What? You're just taking it personally because Penelope made fun of you. Wig aliens are trying to turn our whole town into Wiggians. They need a new home. We don't want them to use <laughs> your brain. Hey, give that back. You've got a bald spot. What? I'm too young to go bald. The wig is causing it. You're lucky. I think we got it off your head before the Wiggians took over your mind. Well, thanks, guys. Everyone in town wearing those Wiggians is dangerous. My stars, Mona. Please control that cat of yours. Sorry, Mrs. Brierson. Did you guys see that? Blitzy looked possessed. It's clear now what the Wiggians are up to. They want to lay new roots because they're homeless, right? Yes. By attaching themselves to heads, the wig wearers become Wiggians forever. We'll have to stop them. And we'll start with Penelope, 
who's spreading this terrible menace. I'll bring my Zapparama. Good thinking. And this time, fill it with hair gel. She doesn't remember. Excuse me, but the wigs are for viewing only. 